welcome again in another uh, video from Garage Age. Today we are doing this lovely uh, Datsun 280Z uh, that we found near mm, our mm, city. Uh, basically we've been doing shots of this car and soon we will be doing probably a uh, whole material about it. Uh, but basically today this is the first official official uh, video tutorial let's call it that way because we've been doing this uh, lovely Skyline R32 a few months back today I will show you the again the basics of my work uh, in Lightroom and Photoshop unfortunately I wasn't able to do this piece on the set I was planning to do this short introduction about uh, light painting, how to uh, use the light to uh, how to pass the car with the light and so on. Uh, but basically, uh, we didn't have uh, enough time that day, so this will happen some other day, probably with another car. Today, just a Photoshop uh, part of this work. Uh, very quickly because I've been doing the same um, same video in Polish on the same uh, on the same set. Uh, you probably can find it already on our YouTube. But basically, there is so much of uh, talking in it that doing uh, subtitles would kill uh, our third guy, our translator. Uh, so that's why I'm doing another photo from the set, but in English, especially for you. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So today again mostly Photoshop, mostly things that we can do uh, here uh, and on some other day we will talk on the set with another uh, strange car. So uh, this is the first shot that I did uh, a few days back. Then the second one was uh, this one. This one is in this Polish tutorial. So slightly different shot uh, and for you my English talking and English speaking friends we have the last one from overall shots of the body of the car the back portion of the car the back uh, shot uh, there are some uh, detailed shots of the car but basically they are not very interesting in the matter of um, doing it so I will leave them uh, basically as they are I will be doing it uh, later and today again we will just focus on those shots so basically what we're gonna do we will be uh, doing some preparations of those photos in Lightroom I will copy and paste my uh, preset that I've used for previous shots as you can see uh, they are very slightly touched uh, here and there uh, and today we will leave it alone uh, because one day we will be talking about how I prepared those things in Lightroom before exporting them to uh, Photoshop for uh, the second part of work but today again just a Photoshop so very shortly some changes made in Lightroom uh, but basically not much so I will copy those uh, I will copy those uh, settings I will do the preset uh, and I will paste it on the mm, second shot basically I will paste it in the first shot and then I will select all of them and I will synchronize this uh, those this preset uh, I will paste it into the mm, rest of the photos they are that are selected basically so Control shift s synchronize and as you can see all of the uh, all of the settings are pasted into the rest of the photos and as you can see there are many mm, shots 21 shots overall from this uh, from this particular mm, image or 21 shots will get into this image probably not all of them but basically there are lots of them usually and I'm working on uh, raw files uh, some people work on JPEGs after mm, finishing those touches in here somehow I prefer to work in raw uh, because afterwards I still have some more 
data to work with when I'm getting back from Photoshop to um, Lightroom for some final touches. Uh, so basically that's it and now we will export it to the uh, Photoshop. I will show you all of those shots and we'll be going through all of them because I will show you my technique uh, slightly um, closer. So um, without further ado, let's jump to Photoshop. It will take a while because uh, I have to um, export all of those, actually import all of those, export and import all of those photos into a Photoshop. And one tip for you, if you are doing it for the first time, uh, you have two options. When you click right on the uh, photo, you have option like edit in and you have the basic one, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, and if you have many photos mm, selected, then if you will choose this option, it will open all of those mm, files, but in a separate documents in Photoshop. So we'll have 21 or whatever uh, separate images. So this is quite important to use a, another option, which is open as layers in Photoshop. So all of those uh, photos will be layered in one document in Photoshop. And this is basically what we need to do to work uh, with light painting cards and taking some details from each, uh, each layer. Uh, basically, if we will do it with the first option, of course, then we can take those photos out of the document and put them into one, but this is time consuming and uh, not very smart. And this is why we will go with open as layers in Photoshop. It will take a while again, so I will turn off for a minute or 10 and we will see each other in Photoshop. Okay, so we are in Photoshop. It took me a while, but basically my laptop is a bit old. Uh, never mind. Uh, what we will do first is that um, we will look for a proper background. Proper background, I mean uh, a photo that will be basically a bottom layer of our cake made out of photos uh, that will be you know, we will be adding different parts of different photos into this um, into this mix into this final photo and I need a proper uh, background usually I look for uh, photos that I did I, I'm doing those photos uh, with some amb ambient light maybe some additional lights or um, almost completely dark with some visible elements because they are great to uh, stack another brighter photos because of the different um, opacity uh, modes that we'll be changing during this uh, work. We'll see um, it in a second. But basically first I need this nice background uh, layer. And I will go through uh, all of those photos we will see what do we have in here and we will look for this uh, for this background for this bottom layer so basically this is the one that I will be probably using for the rooftop and the back of the car but later this one I will probably use for the uh, bottom half of the bottom part of the car and maybe the wheels uh, this one maybe similar thing. Uh, this one obviously very nice back, very nice um, lights. Everything in the back is very nicely lit in without the uh, light streaks or um, things like that. Uh, next one, quite similar. I usually do two similar passes to have an options. Uh, then we have a light from uh, beneath the car. Uh, something from it probably will be used to the uh, final shot. Uh, here we have some another pass over the car. Um, yeah, something from this also will be used. Uh, this isn't very good. There is too much of me in this shot and it is a reason. There is a reason for that. I will tell you in a, in a minute. Uh, okay. This might be my background. I'm not quite sure yet, but this is possible. This is also possible, but not necessarily. This one also might be a background, but probably I will use it the other way. This one is also okay. Yeah, I will go with uh, this one. 
so as you can see we have everything in the photo mostly dark we have some light uh, from behind the car um, facing this uh, forklift maybe it's not the greatest uh, overall shot with this very bright forklift but we will take care of it later or maybe in the whole uh, whole process this happens to be a something nice but we will see basically now i'm taking this uh, layer i will make it green to mm, make it more visible and i will take it to the top and now i will go through all of those layers below i will be dragging them uh, above the background green layer and i will check which elements of those shots will be um, good for my uh, final shot so i'll be just taking the parts of it and i will start for example with this one the order isn't very important so we don't have to care about this uh, i will be going back through all those layers once again when i will finish so basically uh, we don't have to worry about this right now we are just looking for the parts that might be uh, quite nice for our overall image and the first thing we need to do is to decide if this or other photo or parts of this photo of uh, of the car um, are good enough for our um, for our image and basically i can see again with this photo that i would love to use this part of the back maybe the tail lights and overall tail uh, some elements of it maybe not all of it but mostly the top and we will see what will happen with the rest and what i will do now i will change the opacity mode from normal to litten and it doesn't change anything basically because now because of our black background the litten uh, mode opacity mode in this photo is showing only the brightest things the brighter things brighter than the dark background that we have on our uh, bottom layer and basically everything in this shot is brighter than the uh, than the bottom and that's why we are seeing mostly everything but if we will change it i can see it right now we can see that with the normal one <coughs> the forklift the yellow forklift of the on the left is uh, slightly darker when we will change it to the litten the only part from the background from the bottom uh, layer that is brighter than the uh, layer above is this part of the forklift those lights on the forklift when we will turn on the uh, upper layer you can see that they are appearing on this um, on this forklift so that means that this is the only part brighter from the bottom than the layer above i will try to explain it to you once again on some less uh, <coughs> confusing uh, example but probably in the future okay so now what i'm gonna do is i will create a mask and basically uh, again this is a a video tutorial for people who has at least some knowledge some very basic knowledge of how the Photoshop works because uh, masks are very basic but it's hard to maintain them actually to understand them at the beginning and again I hope I will be able to show it to you uh, in the future explain it to you how they works but for today you will just know that we will be using them and I can add a mask to this layer over here. We have this uh, white uh, square over here, maybe not a square, a rectangle. Uh, and now I can remove things from this particular image with a brush, with a brush that is um, black or white. Uh, as you can see, we can always change those basic colors over here. So if I will have a black one as black brush as a my foreground color i will be able to remove things from the photo but if i will uh, sorry if i will change the color to white as a foreground 
I will be able to get those elements that I just removed back to our photo. So very basic, very simple. Uh, and I don't want to remove every little part of the photo by hand by removing all the details that I don't want. So what I will do, uh, I will reverse it. I will uh, reverse this mask into a black one by pressing Ctrl E. And now I removed everything from this mask. And now when everything is removed, I will just use this brush with a white as a foreground color to paint back, to paint in only the elements that I wanted from this previous, from this shot that we cannot see right now because it's all dark. When I will turn it off, I can see what I want to take. So I want to take those elements, at least those elements. So now I will just take this brush and I will paint it in. And as you can see, it's getting back to our image. And this is much faster and much more convenient, I believe so, at least, uh, than doing it otherwise. So taking all the photo and removing all the parts from it. Now I'm just painting in the elements that I know I want to get back to this shot. And of course, it doesn't look uh, very good right now, but uh, trust me, it will look better in a, a few minutes. Uh, okay, and I must be very careful about those edges because as you can see over here, I get too much of it and I need to remove those um, overlays that are not on the car, basically. Uh, sometimes it's too much. So again, we have to paint it in uh, back to the image. But basically you have to be very careful and do it uh, quite uh, thorough to get nice results. So I will remove this uh, light around the wheels, around the tires, so here. Okay, it's not very important because the mm, bottom layer, the background, the, the floor of this warehouse will be taken from other shot just like the wheels, the tires, but basically mm, just keep it clean. Okay, so this is it from the first shot, from the shot that I will mark as yellow for this example. So this is everything that we need from this shot. We had this and we are just leaving this. So we have those two uh, layers and we can go to another photo. So I will take another photo, I will uh, move it to the top. And as you can see, we have something like this. And what I like in this particular shot is the side of the car. Maybe I have seen better one, but for now I will use it. And I like the ground also. Not quite sure if I will use it in a final touch, but for now, from this photo, I'm just taking things that looks attractive to me that probably will be uh, in some way useful for the final image. Maybe I will move them later, but for now I will take what I want. Uh, it doesn't sound good. But basically the same operation, mask, reverse it with Ctrl I, and now I am just painting in the elements that I want from this layer that I saw. Uh, Okay, so something like this, but without this upper part, so something like this. Uh, okay, this one stays from the previous one, sorry, not like this, like this, exactly. Uh, maybe something over here, not too much because we have this light streak over here and it doesn't look nice on the body of car and in the air, so basically uh, we need to be very careful not to let this kind of light into our shot. Okay, this one goes here. <clears throat> All right. My laptop is, as I told you, a bit laggy today. Uh, but that's it for this particular 
layer. This is it. So uh, this is what we had with this uh, shot and I've just took the bottom of it and the rest is from the previous uh, from the previous layers, from the layers below this one, so from the yellow one and from the green one. Okay, and now I can go to another shot. So I will take maybe this one. All right, and I have uh, some more details written in the back. So when we will compare it, um, some elements are a bit nicer or they are adding some uh, depth to overall image. So basically, again, I will make a create a mask, I will reverse it, and I will try to paint in some of the details from the back that might be better, or maybe they will add some value to it, uh, but it won't be that much because the first layer of the back was pretty nice. Uh, but let's check it. So the the one over here is a bit nicer, I think. I like those uh, those shadows on the um, on the tail lights, but I don't like those light streaks over here. But we can always keep it from the previous shot. So something like this. Of course, we need to make it even. And over here. And exactly the same thing goes here. So like this. I'm doing a straight lines uh, when I am uh, removing those parts of the um, of the layers of, on the mask uh, by pressing Shift. So when I'm pressing Shift and clicking in between two uh, places, I'm getting those straight lines. So this is just a tip for you. Uh, more about it in the future, hopefully. And basically, this is it. This is all that I wanted from the shot. Maybe something in here. No, this is the previous one is better. So as you can see, it already looks quite interesting. Maybe mm, not the best, but there are lots of layers mm, uh, to work with. But for now, it already doesn't look uh, bad. Okay, let's go with another layer. So we have something like this, and I need to think, is there anything in this particular shot that adds any kind of value, any kind of uh, depth to this uh, shot that I already have? And to be honest, uh, not really. I don't like the top uh, part because of this white light streak mm, on the roof and on the side. So this is something that I won't use. Maybe I will use just those um, light streak on the window because they will add some uh, texture, some con contrast to this, uh, to this, um, I don't know how it's called this element on the window, but you will probably know. Uh, so basically, again, I will invert the mask and I will paint back in only this element in here, maybe some of it in here, but as you can see, the contrast is slightly different. Uh, the blacks in between those bars are getting less uh, black and we will remove it. As you can see, it's changing. So I will do it very uh, close to the edge without getting into the uh, into the window and uh, that we can see. Uh, okay, something like this. I'm not quite sure if this is something that will stay permanently, but for now, I can use it, I can mark it as a orange layer. That usually means for me that this is the layer that uh, I'm not removing right now, but I cannot see anything interesting in this layer for now, but I don't want to remove it yet because maybe in the future I will have to get back to it. So for now, let's leave it as like this and let's go to another layer. So another layer goes to the top. Okay, and what do I have here is 
this very nice line of the roof uh, that looks brighter as you can see it will mm, it will match with this part over here so i will turn it to uh, turn the opacity into litten as uh, previously and um, <coughs> And I will try to remove uh, or actually paint in the things that I need. So again, new mask and invert. Uh, okay, and let's try to paint in those elements. Let's see how it will look. Okay, so basically this is the thing that we don't want, as you already know, so let's remove it. I just want this part of the roof, maybe this part of the pillar without the window because of the reflection in it okay so like this uh, here we have another reflection okay so just this we are removing the inside of the window with this uh, light streak and we are leaving it like this those elements, remove those elements, probably we'll find some better uh, sooner or later with some different layers. Uh, maybe we'll do it like this for now. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, as you can see, there is this uh, brighter part uh, because my brush was too big and I want to remove this excess okay over the roof like this maybe even slightly more into the roof line right and now it looks quite fine uh, as you can see not much was taken from this uh, layer but basically it looks nicer maybe we will just make it slightly less visible by changing the opacity from 100 to let's say 70 percent maybe even more yeah 60 will be just fine and as you can see it's quite okay another layer mm, we have something like this and what i want from this layer is probably the uh, ground probably some elements on the window and probably some elements of the background in here but of course they are too bright we will change the opacity again but let's try to paint it in so again you mask invert brush and let's brush this uh, those elements wait what's happening no 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 this isn't well, maybe as you can see my uh, yeah, my uh, laptop is weirdly laggy today. Um, like this, here we leave it like this, and we will try to take some of it to make it even. Uh, okay. Get back those elements over here. Of course, without the wheel. Okay. Like this. And it doesn't look bad. I'm not quite sure about this part. It's from the it's from the previous uh, layer. Maybe it's a bit too bright, but we'll take care of it later. But we have some extra light in the back. It's adding some kind of contrast to this shot. I must say it's quite okay. Uh, we will leave it for now and we will see what will happen. I just need to remove my shoe over here. Um, so maybe like this. Uh, or we will try to find something else to mask it out. Uh, for now, this is fine. Another layer. Let's see what do we have in here. We have mm, something like that. Let's change the opacity to Litten. Let's turn it off and on and see what we can get from this layer. 
I like to have this part over here so the uh, light on the ground is a bit more even. That's for sure. Uh, and maybe the roof line, or maybe not. Yeah, basically, maybe something in the uh, in the back, but not much from it. Again, mask, invert. Let's paint this in, and let's paint this into the shot. Of course, there's too much of it because of the light, so just those elements. And we will use a mix brush to make it more faded in the overall look. Okay, like this, and this is quite fine. So again, not much was added from this, uh, from this uh, layer, but some elements are quite okay. I will just once again use a mixer brush to make it even. Okay, and we can go to another. Uh... So another layer goes to the top. Mm -hmm. And what do we have here? We have, let's see, let's change the opacity mode to Litten again. So some nice light uh, below the car. Uh, and basically that's it. Maybe the light on the mm, on the front uh, window but it's too bright so we can use it once again we will make a copy by pressing ctrl and j so we have the copy of this uh, of this mask of this layer and the mask well there is no mask for now but just the layer i will make a create a layer with this one again invert it and i will take the light from beneath the car and on the second layer I will make another mask I will invert it and I will take just the light that is on the uh, on the window okay again too much of it so like this and as I told you it's much too bright for me but uh, on the other hand, I don't want to have this deep, dark uh, hole in the body of the car, or at least not as black as it is right now, and not as bright as with this layer turned on. So we will change the opacity to something like 35% maybe. Yeah. And it looks okay. Maybe it's still a bit too dark. We will change the feel something like this around 60 percent and it looks quite okay all right let's go to another layer uh, what do we have here uh, okay not much to be honest and the important thing uh, as i told you previously the overall idea of light painting uh, is to uh, lit the light over the subject basically the car and because it's a long exposure from 5 to 10 seconds per shot, you might appear on those shots, especially when you have brighter clothes on yourself. And in this, uh, on this set, on that day, I had my uh, bright olive green camo shorts and they are sometimes appearing. So when you are doing those kind of shots, uh, it's quite good to take uh, rather darker clothes because they are less reflective they are um, they do not reflect the light uh, as much as the brighter clothes so this is something to consider and also uh, to avoid uh, clothes with bright uh, colors like orange like green like yellow because probably they will um, in some way appear on the uh, on your shot so uh, it's good to avoid them. Uh, it happens, uh, we have those shadows, we have those ghost elements of the clothes, of the shoes uh, all the time on those shots, but basically we can remove them or we can create many layers of the same shot. And within this 
um, process, we can remove them much more easily uh, when we will be doing this kind of post-processing. So uh, for this particular shot, I don't want nothing from it, so I will just remove it. So goodbye. And I will take another shot and I will see what's in it. Okay, so this one is much better. Uh, and as you can see, mm, it's giving me some mm, additional lights. Not much of it, but some, especially in here. I'm considering the ground in this shot because uh, it's quite, mm, quite nice. Uh, because this one is very bright. Maybe it's not, uh, not bad, but maybe in the final process I will try to use this uh, ground, this floor, uh, as the main one in this shot. But for now I will just mark it as, uh, let's say, yellow, and I will name it ground. Uh, and maybe I will get back to it. For now I will just turn it into the litten uh, mode and I will use some elements of it. Uh, so I will paint in those lights over here, of course, without, uh, without this. So just some lights that are appearing on the car. Uh, mm -hmm. Like this, of course, too much. Okay. And for now, that's it. Maybe I will get back to it. All right, what do we have here? Uh, something like this. So this is quite similar, but with the uh, shorter shadow on the ground because I was taking my uh, lamp far above the, uh, above the roof of the car and uh, on the other side of the car, so basically I was trying to get as uh, short shadow as it's possible uh, and when we compare it with uh, this shot, which was quite similar, we can see that this shadow is slightly longer. Uh, and why is it? Well, and why it's necessary to have this shorter shadow, I will try to show you when I will see all the layers at the end of this uh, work, but for now there is not much that I want to take from this uh, shot. Uh, okay. Uh, no, there is not much that I want to take from this, uh, from this shot. So maybe just this edge of the... Yeah, I like this part. I will show you what I mean. I like to have this. It gives some extra uh, contrast to the overall shape of the car. Of course, it can be too much of it. So like this, okay. And it's not much, but we are getting some kind of edge into the overall shape of the car. Uh, and the hood is in this darker, uh, for now, darker part of the, um, of the image. So this kind of very thin light on the edge of the hood uh, adds a shape to it. So this is something that I would like to keep. Okay, let's go to another layer. We have one over here. It might be crucial uh, for one thing. Yes, that's what I thought. This is my shot for a lower part of the car, but also uh, for the... Uh, no, I'm sorry, this is not the, uh, the layer that I wanted. Uh, so this one gives me not much, actually. Let's leave it as a orange one. Uh, maybe we'll get back to it but I have one layer over here and this is one of those layers that are mostly used for this kind of ambient light that, will, uh, that I will show you in a few minutes. But uh, what I would like to have, I don't have nice 
for now at least, I don't have a nice pass that uh, will lead this part of the car, the uh, higher part of the, of the doors. Uh, they are a bit dark and with this shot I can take some of it and make it slightly uh, nicer. What do I mean? I will take it and turn it into a little and as you can see we are getting some details and some information about the color in the uh, in this upper part and it's uh, nicely lit in. It's giving us those colors. Of course, we have this part over here. We don't want it, so we will change it. Uh, we will erase it uh, from the overall image by adding just the elements that we want. So basically, mask and invert the mask, and we will paint in only those uh, elements in here. In here, this is too much. This is too much, but those elements are quite fine. And if I would like to make it even slightly more uh, brighter, it's not bad. It adds some light into it and it is enough in my opinion. But if I would think about giving it even a bit more light to it, I can always add some curves to this layer, uh, create a clipping mask for only this uh, layer and just add some light to it. Of course not like this, but very slightly, especially from the darker parts of the curve with the curve like this. Okay. Like this. As you can see, it's not much, but it's adding a lot. Maybe we will make it slightly less contrasty. Yeah, and it's fine. Uh, we will try to mask out this uh, edge between those layers uh, later. But for now, we can leave it like this. This is uh, fine. Yeah, let's keep it. Okay, and basically those are the parts of the mm, car that we've been trying to uh, exposure uh, expose in a proper way uh, with those elements and as you can see it looks quite nice but I have some more uh, additional layers with this kind of ambient light that it's not uh, hitting directly the car but um, it's doing some kind of atmosphere to overall shot not only the car but also the place uh, and to make it more visible, to make it more attractive, I will probably turn off this layer because as you can remember, we have this whole ground from this pass in this particular layer uh, and it's not a bad. Probably, maybe it will stay uh, as the final one, but uh, before that I will try to uh, use those other layers and see if they will make uh, this shot look different. I don't know if better, but different. So let's first check them. Let's take them to the top, the first one. And the first one is uh, the one that I was uh, trying to make this uh, counter light uh, to the car, but I was hoping that I am uh, hidden behind the uh, forklift. Unfortunately, not, as you can see. Uh, but things that we might take from it, uh, the light that we might take from it, is this part over here because this uh, rooftop of this hangar is quite interesting in the form and maybe some light over, uh, over here on the forklift. So uh, again, mask, invert, and here I will just paint it in okay like this but here on this part i will take the uh, gradient tool and i will create this gradient over here and as you can see i am not painting it with the brush but i'm just adding some light into it gradually because it looks more natural uh, and it's not so hard and as you can see it's too much because it starts to appearing in the 
uh, on the left side. Maybe still it's a bit too much. Uh, okay, so basically with and without, not much, but it adds something to it. Uh, the contrast is a bit off, so I will try to uh, fix it again with the curves to this layer. Uh, so I will just turn them down a bit, it's too much. Maybe like this. Okay, it's not bad. It's not much again, but those are just some small details that uh, might count in the final uh, in the final shot. For now, I will leave it. Another ambient light uh, shot. I'm calling it an ambient ambient light, but I don't even know if it's correct. Okay, and we have something like this: a nice light on the ground. But when we will turn the uh, opacity mode into the litten we will just lose it. We have some uh, lights on the uh, on the car, on the body of the car, but the ground is not changing. Basically because this light from the previous, uh, from this uh, layer is too strong uh, when we compare it with the layer that we just used. So I will try to turn it off and now you can see that this light is appearing in here because it has a room to show up. And now the question is, as I told you, uh, do I want to leave it? Do I want to use it? Or maybe I will go with this one. It's a bit uh, heavy. Uh, it's quite strong. I have nice wheels in this, uh, in this shot and I have nice uh, body of the uh, car. The, the, bottom part of it so I can always get back to this layer and just paint back the parts that I don't want so basically for now I will try to remove it like this okay just give a few seconds to my laptop okay uh, are you alive Yes, you are. So very closely around the edges, the wheels, okay, like this. And we will try to look for some other uh, lights uh, that will look better with this part because now it doesn't look good. We will have to remove it also. It's in here mostly. Uh, okay, so let's try to remove some light from this uh, from this uh, layer also. Maybe like this. Bit too much. Mm -hmm. And also this layer. So like this. And there is something else in here. Okay, I can see this is the layer above the yellow one. It also has some ground, but my computer is dead. Okay, and as you can see, now the car looks absolutely different. Uh, and now the question is, which kind of the floor, uh, the ground, uh, is better for this shot? Uh, we didn't use all of the ambient lights mm, so far, so we will check them. And then I will decide which uh, finally, which ground, which um, variation of this ground I want to keep for this shot. So, for now, let's leave it like, leave it like this. We can see that it's not evenly uh, painted in and painted out with some elements. So, uh, there will be some uh, things to uh, do still. But for now, let's check it. This is, as you can see, some other kind of light from other direction so maybe it will even out those elements and as you can see it's not bad it's quite interesting maybe uh, maybe this will be the answer for this shot um, one more ambient light over here okay what do we have here we have mostly the uh, the roof 
and some light below the car, but this is quite uh, this is quite fine. Uh, okay, we can leave it. Uh, and now let's get back to those layers. I would like to remove slightly remove this uh, light leak over here. I don't like it at all, so I will create the mask. And I will try to just dab it once with the, uh, with the brush, and it's gone. It's fine. Okay, and now again the question: Do I want to keep it that way with the uh, with the lights on the? The, the dimmer lights on the ground on the ground or do I want to keep it very bright very strong to be honest I like this version uh, better because because it's darker because it's the, the contrast between between the car and between the overall background and foreground of the image uh, is stronger uh, and I prefer it this way so I think I will keep it that way uh, of course there are some things to uh, repair because we have those uh, lights over here uh, we can remove them right away okay like this and it looks quite fine of course uh, i will have to also remove this part because it doesn't look natural with uh, this uh, within this situation so i believe this is the part exactly mm -hmm like this maybe not beneath the car we will leave it like this with some light from behind the car of course uh, like this okay and the forklift okay we will try to make it even all right how does it look doesn't look bad but it also doesn't look very good especially the fact that the contrast of this layer is a bit too uh, off when we compare it to the other uh, elements okay so yeah uh, this right and there are some elements that will uh, change in the overall process but I don't want to uh, lose too much time uh, to do it in this tutorial there will be some changes probably because there are some things that I want to clean out on the car uh, basically there are elements in the background and on the body of the car that will be changed will be removed uh, the final thing we can we can leave it like this for now you will see the uh, final uh, photo at the end of this video uh, but the final thing in this uh, part of the process of this putting all the layers together into one uh, photo uh, the final part is to turn on the lights of course if I want to and if I have a layer with the lights that are uh, turned on in this image and of course I have those I have three of them they are uh, different because of the different uh, exposure times uh, and as you can see they are brighter or darker so basically I think this one the one over here is too strong so I will turn it off this one is quite nice because uh, it lights uh, it lights the uh, um, inside of the tail lights it lights the uh, those lights on the side of the car uh, but basically it's not too bright it doesn't leak uh, like this one for example but the stronger one might be used for some additional ambient lights so i will try to mix them all together so basically what to do to um, turn those lights on the final image is just to turn the opacity uh, mode from normal to lit and as you can see we can turn them on and off and it looks quite nice um, basically i would just leave it like this but I will try to turn this layer also. Uh, 
as a litten and as you can see we are getting some additional lights in the background this nice red uh, overlay in here i think i will keep it because this is nice but the lights on the car are too strong the uh, lights that are falling on the forklift doesn't look quite natural quite nice so uh, i will remove them so basically again uh, mask inverted and i will just paint in this light on the ground the question is is this the, 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 the strongest layer isn't even better in the matter of showing those lights on the ground. We can copy this um, mask over here. Okay, and it looks like this. Can add it a bit more. Okay. Hello, wake up. Yes. So like this, not like this, like this. Okay, now the question is, is this one better than this one? This very uh, subtle one or this very visible one? And now just up to me to decide. And I must say that I think I will go with this one. Uh, it's just some kind of color. Um, overlay that it's not distracting but it adds some kind of color of course you know what i mean i believe so so basically this is uh, how it's gonna look i will remove this layer and uh, and and yeah and this is it mostly mm. I don't want to go into too much detail because this video is already very very long and if you stay till this point then I would like to say thank you and I would like to congratulate you that you've been so uh, patient actually because there's lots of things um, happening in this uh, in this video uh, so basically we will leave it like this for today you have the overall uh, look into this process of taking elements from different uh, different photos and turning them into one image. Of course, as I told you before, probably some things will change. Those changes won't be very uh, big. So basically, we'll leave it like this for today. Uh, you will see the final uh, photo at the end of this video uh, and in the future videos I will show you things that I am doing after this part of the process so I will have some other car I will put it uh, all together into one image and then from this part we will go through some additional work in Photoshop and then back to the Lightroom because there will be things uh, happening to this photo in Lightroom 2 mm, but this will be the other video and also the other video the video from the uh, from the set uh, will show up here in the future so mm, be patient uh, and this is it for now how to put all those images into one and in the future you will get the rest of the necessary knowledge to do it in a proper way i don't know in the way that i do it and i like it and some of you also like it because you are leaving lots of comments uh, on our mm, garage age uh, profile or some messages and also on my private uh, account on instagram uh, so basically i trust that you find those photos at least interesting so that's it for today i cannot stop I don't know how to stop, I'm still talking, so let's do it, bye!